He was Sean Strickland, who won tonight's co-main event of the evening at UFC 302. Now, my biggest question for you was, you hear 49, 46 Costa. I mean, what are you thinking in that moment? You know, man, the judges are crazy. The judges are crazy. And, you know, I'm a little bit too outspoken with my beliefs. And sometimes I think that that bias backfires on me a little bit. But, uh, you know, you leave it in the hands of the judges and you lose. You just sack the f up and take it. You know, you, you have, you're a man in the cage. You're a man in the arena. It's, your, it's up to you to do it. It's, if you leave it in the hands of the judges and you get f you get f I, I don't know. I mean, to me, that's about as clear of a fight as you could possibly have. It was just hard, man. It was a bad fight, really bad fight. You know, like I'm, I'm an unathletic fat white man, you guys. I, I can't, I can barely run. Dude, I run a five eight, you guys. So it's like you get someone backing up like that, and my lumbering ass. So, you know, I kind of wish it's a little bit more in the pocket, but it is what it is. The thing that gets me when I watch you fight is, you know, we all know what you're gonna do. Like we, everybody who faces you knows what you're gonna do. They just cannot stop what you're able to. What, what makes what you're able to do in the cage so special that people are unable to figure you out? I strive for excellence in the gym. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a world champion kickboxer, if you're a world champion boxer, I will spar you and I will spar you till I figure you out. I look for, when I walk into the gym, I never get easy work. I never pick, I never pick the easy guys. I pick the killers. And, you know, when it came to Costa, I don't know Costa's camp, but Every time a badass walked in the gym, I was doing five rounds. You know, Johnny Eblen, Je Jolly e Eblen, Eblen. Yes. Sorry, man. He's a good friend of mine. I always forget his last name, but he's a Bellator middleweight champ, and he is one of the best fighters in the world. And me and him go toe to toe, head to head, every time he's in town, and that's what makes me so good. I, I spar the best every chance I get. Has there ever been a puzzle that you've been unable to solve in the gym from maybe a different weight class? Uh, that long frustrates guy, you? Saudi Sai. Now, mind you, me and, me and Johnny are neck to neck. But Saudi Sai, he's so long and lanky. He's a, he's a frustrating guy. He's a frustrating guy at the PFL. Well, what's the difference between sparring him when he was 170 and now he's 205? Oh, God. Probably no. a lot worse. Yeah, now he just hits harder. <laughs> now he just hits harder, you know? But, yeah, no. I, I, got, I got such a great team, you guys. My team is my family, you know? So I, I'm a very fortunate. Do you think a championship uh, shot is what's next for you? Yeah, I know. I paid my pen. I paid my dues. I paid my dues. I'll sit and wait. You want me to wait three, four, five months? I'll wait. Give me that belt shot. I'm on it. Now, you broke a record tonight, and I'm not sure you're going to like the record, but you now have the longest average fight time in middleweight history. Oh, God. Guys, the fuck. <laughs> you, Johnny. <laughs> you. Uh, yeah, I'm playing to the peanut gallery over there. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. We're going to ignore that question. <laughs> Well, we, it, it's easy to solve that, though. Next fight out, you just get a you know, first-round finish. Yeah, for, dude, move, I'm telling you. On. I mean, you see the <laughs> lot how I'm doing the karate kid? Like, <laughs> you got to do that to catch Costa. Like, I, come on, man. <laughs> All right, Sean. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, best of luck on whatever comes next for you, and uh, safe travels home. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Here with Kevin Holland, and I just spoke to your coach, Crew Bob, and he said you were happy this week. Yeah. And when you're happy, you're at your most dangerous. What was it yeah. about this week that gave you that kind of mentality and attitude? Uh... Overall, just a good week. I, I right energy around me, right people around me. Uh, it's like it's it's just always cool when things just go swell and things just went swell. Jersey loved me. I love Jersey. East Coast loved me. I love the East Coast, uh, especially when it's not cold. So I f with it. <laughs> so that was a incredible finish for you. Did you feel like a pop of any sort when you had his arm? It, it seemed like you were twisting it in every possible direction you could. Yeah, we got the pop in the beginning, and then after that, I just couldn't find a pop again. Uh, I didn't want to rip it off the bone, but best believe if I have to, I would rip it off the bone. Uh, and best believe that guy was tough. When they stopped the fight, he was like, it's not off the bone. So uh, props to that guy. If we ever go to war, at least somebody like that on seal 16 with me. You know what I mean? Do you understand why he was upset about the stoppage? Because it wasn't off the bone. <laughs> oh, there you go. I guess you gave me my answer, my answer already in the last question. <laughs> so you say you're a prize fighter. You're going to go with the prizes. But if you had your choice of a welterweight or middleweight fight next, what would you take? Uh, whatever the UFC wants me to do. I'm pretty sure there's somebody that needs their ass whooped. Uh, Joaquin Buckley keeps running his mouth, and maybe I have to go whoop him. That is my son. You know, you got to always keep your kids in line. Uh, then you got Nick. That's, that's at 170, or that could be at 85. So it's like I'm down for that. Uh, then at 85, there's, a pretty, there's probably a lot of guys I like to fight. I like a Marvin Vittori rematch, rematch if I'm going to stay at 85. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know what he did his last fight, but it's like I think I got my wrestling takedown defense a little bit better, even though I finished this one off my back. Maybe my jiu-jitsu just got better. I don't know. I just want to fight, and I want to fight like, Soon, you know what I mean? So that's me. Yeah, you took very little damage in that one. So Very when, little damage when, and very little weight cut. <laughs> so whenever something comes up, you're happy to take a short notice back? Because, again, Crew Bob I just spoke to, and yeah. he likes that for you. Yeah, I just need, I need one week to take the family on vacation. Uh, I need another week to go hunt for a full week solid. Then anything after that, I'm ready to go. Where are you going on vacation? 
uh, wherever the family wants to go, I'll take them. So it's like short notice for that too. Short notice for everything, <laughs> baby. Short notice for everything. All right, Kevin, appreciate you doing this. Thanks for doing Thank this. Thank you, uh, boss. And look forward to your next fight. This was short notice too. Yeah, short notice interview. You didn't know you didn't do it until we got here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. American Top Team has their first lightweight win on the board tonight. Hopefully another to come in the main event. Uh, at least if you were to ask you and your teammates, that's uh, obviously been a big thing. You've been a big training partner of Dustin Poirier for this camp, but let's focus on your fight. M must be great to get back in the win column in such dominant fashion. Yeah, we, we went out there. We got the win. I don't really care how I win. I just want to get the win. Um, I took him down. He closed his guard, and, and that, was the, that was the story. I think if he had tried to get up a little bit more, maybe I could have done a little bit more. But there's no reason to you know, take risks when, when there's a very clear path to victory. Yeah, I think people need to realize that this is a long-term career that you've got, taking undue damage when you don't need to, when you can take the path of least resistance, get a win, get your win bonus. I mean, that's the smart way of fighting. Yeah, if I had let him up uh, to please the crowd and gotten knocked out, he would have been the hero, not me. Absolutely, and when you look at a fight like this, this was a great opportunity for you to get back in the win column. How, how much does that take a, a load off of your back after a, a win like that? I, I wouldn't say there was a, a load. You know, I, I'm... I didn't get into this sport to beat Bobby Green. I didn't get into this sport to beat Joe Selecki. I got into this sport to be a world champion. Um, I know people are going to say, well, if you can't beat Bobby Green, you can't be a world champion. And we all know that's Bubkiss. Uh, Islam Makhachev got knocked out by a guy that went on a seven-fight losing streak after knocking him out. Things happen in this sport, and all you can do is minimize risk and keep working towards that belt. How long do you think your game plan would be in, in terms of getting a belt? Like, when you look at your map of your career, how far away do you think that is? I mean, uh, Glover Teixeira won it at 42. John Jones won it at 23. Anywhere in between there. As long as I'm champion for one night, I really don't care. Uh, uh, Charles Oliveira had nine or ten losses before he won the belt. Th this journey is different for everybody. It's up and down. It's a heart rate monitor. Um, I'm, I'm just here to st keep it as steady as possible. We look at your dominant grappling in the tonight's main event. You got Dustin Poirier against a very dominant grappler in his own right, in Islam Makhachev. How valuable do you think you have been for Dustin in this camp? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think I'm the most like Islam Makhachev when it comes to the grappling. Um, I, I helped him out quite a bit. He helped me out quite a bit for this fight. Uh, Dustin is a guy that I look up to. Dustin is a guy that I want nothing but the best for him. I want him to be the richest MMA fighter in the world. I want him to win that belt. I want him to get all the hoes. You know? uh, I want him to do the best. So I'm, I'm really rooting for Dustin Poirier. And if he wins this belt tonight, it's not going to be because I'm a training partner of his. It's going to be because he put in the work. When you look at the rankings, you've been ranked before. Is there a logical next opponent for you, in your opinion? Yeah, anybody in the top 15, I would really like a crack at Jalen Turner. He beat a guy that beat me, so I think a way to get, o get one over on Bobby Green is to beat the guy that just beat him last. So uh, I, I think that's kind of the thing to do. I think Jalen Turner, but uh, I know he's coming off a loss. I know he probably doesn't want to fight a wrestler again. I if that fight doesn't work out, I'm down for pretty much anybody in the top 15. All right, Grant, it's a pleasure seeing you back in the win column. Thank you so much for doing this, and best of luck to you and your team later on tonight. Thank you. You look like Bill Nye the science guy. Well, I appreciate that as well. I'm as smart as him, too. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> Randy Brown improves to 8-0 in the state of New Jersey. It's been a great place for you. You started your whole career there. Your first eight, I guess, seven fights yep. in your career were in New Jersey. So was it good to come back here after all this time? Absolutely, man. It feels good. It's like my second home at this point, right across the bridge. Coming here, I drove here 30 minutes. So, you know, I'm about to go home after all of this. When we talked yesterday. You talked about how Zalesky Dos Santos was going to be a tough opponent for mm -hmm. you. That turned out to be the case. Second round, a tough round for you. But... The last 30 seconds of the round, you really shifted the momentum. You were able to reverse position, get him into a choke, yeah. make things difficult for him, and, and really change the flow of the fight. So mm -hmm. how did you feel coming out of that second round, knowing you'd lost the round, but that you had kind of gathered that momentum? Um, I, had to just, I had to just chalk it up to what it was. You know what I mean? It's fresh. We start fresh. We get to reset. Coach is screaming at me, telling me what I need to do. So I can't, I can't cry over spilled milk. It's gone. Sense of urgency in the third round come out and make it do what it do, man. And how confident were you that you had won the first round? Oh, I was smacking him up with that jab, man. I was good. I was very confident I had the first round in the bag. I knew he was going to come strong because he's he has a level of clarity because he's a, better, a veteran. He's been here, so he knows what's going on in there. So I expected him to come, on, come hard in that second round. He did. Um, zigged when I was supposed to zag. He got my back, and, uh, you know, I had to make the adjustments. You called out Jeff Neal after the fight? Yeah. It seems like it's overdue for you to be able to get a guy that's in the rankings. Yeah. I think that would be a good fight. Is that why uh, you like Jeff Neal? You, you like the stylistic matchup? Yeah, I love the style. I know he's, he's, a, he's a great uh, veteran as well. He's been around, dangerous guy, and a respectable guy. You know what I mean? I beat a guy like that that I'm undeniable after that. You feel like you're starting to find the consistency that you need to, to move up those rankings? Absolutely. I think it's about time. What's been the key for you to, to get that, to be able to have this kind of confidence? Just being more deliberate, man, and knowing that I got the skill set. I've been here. I know I had the skill set by what I do in the gym. You know what I mean? I see it in the gym every day. My teammates know what it is. My coaches know what it is. And 
the fans and the promotion is just yet to see it because they only get to see me when I come out here. So they get to see a glimpse. And right now I'm more deliberate with, with what I do. And I have an understanding of putting it together and uh, we're making it happen now. Explain that, being more deliberate. How does that work? Um, so I'm a guy that I feel like I have, it's like a utility belt. I have so much tools in my, and I can do so much. I'm like, I think, I think I'm a special talent. You know, I have a lot of different things that I can do. And that's the problem. I tend to just go out there and just throw shit and see what <laughs> sticks. And uh, my coach is always telling me to just keep it simple and do what you're good at. You're really good at these some things. Like just stick with those things. If it works, don't don't try to fix it. Don't try to do too much. Sometimes I try to do too much. Whereas if I if it's a simple jab, it's a simple jab. Win with the jab. If it's a cross, it's win with the cross. If it's a low kick, win with the low kick. Sometimes I try to throw too many things and oh, what's next? What's next? You know. So I've learned to just be more deliberate, and that's that's the key. And how do you, I guess? mix that with your level of calm you always seem to be very calm in there yeah. that's been a good asset for you so how do you remain calm while trying to be deliberate uh, that's just my personality man <laughs> and people may think people think i'm arrogant when i fight in there sometimes so sometimes like i'll read comments and people just think i may come off as like ah oh, this guy is so cool, cocky and he shows up it's not just how i am man i'm just i don't overthink it at times especially now lately it's gonna be what it's gonna be and well i don't need to I don't really need to panic. I mean, we're fighting, so I just, I'm just chilling, man. I'm doing what I need to do, you know? Hey, if you're arrogant in the cage, people shouldn't hate on that. If you meet the man himself, Brandy Brown, you'll know that he's the last thing uh, from arrogance. So thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate you. All right, no problem, man. Thanks for having me.